Welcome to Inside the Artist. My name is Rachel Corman. Today, my guest is Matthias Ward. He is an actor best known for his roles on Hostages, Murder in the First, and Lab Rats. I found it really interesting to interview someone who grew up as a child actor because there's so many more elements that come into that, especially schooling. Matthias talks about what it was like being homeschooled and going to school on set and the challenges that he faced with that. I really enjoyed my conversation with Mateus, and I hope you do too. So here it is. Enjoy. Mateus, it's so good to see you. Good to see you too. It's been a minute. A little bit, yeah. Like, when was Hostages? Five years ago? <sighs> was it? That's what we worked on together. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, was it that long ago? I think it was fi- four or five years ago. I don't know how time works. It's That's crazy. <laughs> what have you been up to since? Um, lately, I mean, I did a, a show called Murder in the First, which was uh, an incredible role, incredible cast. I went and did an episode on Lab Rats, which was fun to come back and have my character come back. And then lately, I've just sort of been working on kind of a lot of my own stuff. Uh, You've been working with your dad. Yeah, I've been working with my dad, which has been fantastic. We did a, a film called The Meanest Man in Texas, which uh, has been doing great on the festival circuit. And now we're we're in the, the distribution process, and uh, while that's happening, we we started another film together that that's called Relish, and it's it's an incredible story. It's just uh, it's one of the most beautiful scripts that I've that I've read. So I was really really excited for this one. Um, so you're collaborating a lot together, yeah, yeah. developing I mean, projects, and are you writing as well, or is your dad writing them? I uh, he usually does most of the writing, but um, but I'm there all the time, and uh, my goal is to start to start writing soon. Um, we wrote a script uh, together a while ago that kind of ended up getting a little lost in the in the pitches. And when Meanest Man came through, that one kind of went under. But um, yeah, I definitely want to write. That's definitely kind of where I want to go. Uh, I want to direct. That's that's kind of where my mind is consistently. I always sort of described it as uh, I was never really in the same world as anyone else. I was mm. seeing you know this world through a, a lens of my own sort of. Uh, vision of how the world looks and and uh it'd be really interesting to sort of you know kind of get that down into something and 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 uh make something out of it and um yeah being able to sort of shadow my dad as he directs and kind of being there through the writing process uh being someone to bounce ideas off of and and basically learning about the craft has been the best school that that I think I could go to is is being on set on the days when I'm not working and getting to go, why, why'd you make that decision? Yeah. Why, what, what, what was that, the reasoning for And also that? imagine for being an actor, you've worked with so many different directors. Right. I'm sure you kind of take something from each director. You learn like all the different ways you can direct and maybe you're pulling from their experiences and, and coming up with your own way to, to Absolutely, do it. absolutely. I think there's, um, there's certain traits in certain directors that you start to pick up on as an actor at least uh you know there's the 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 classic you know actor's director who I think my dad is um is a good example of that of someone who uh trusts the actors completely with their character and he he knows just as much as they do but when they come and ask him a question what he always does is he goes he asks them back the question and then they figure it out and he goes yeah, like, <laughs> like he's very um, – everyone sort of described it as being really freeing, which is mm. something that sometimes you don't get to work with. On a TV show, even though it was just uh, one season each on two uh, drama TV shows, very kind of similar uh, audience, similar kind of tone, mm-hmm. um, Hostages and Murder in the First, you work with so many directors. Yeah. Every episode is a, is a new director. And, um, is that challenging for an actor? Uh, Do you have to like adapt to each episode? Honestly, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a it's a different it's a weird thing because there's some directors who come in and they're like you've been doing this you've been with this character longer than I have um obviously you like would have you some, tell me how you think right. you would do it and then there's some directors that come in are like all right so this is how your character thinks and it's like I mean the last episode I, yeah he didn't and then do you end so up that's... having conversations with directors and and try to come to a medium or how how do you work that out I mean it always depends on the director I, yeah. I think a good director will do that. I think a good director, um, if he's 100% sure in his vision and an actor is 100% sure in, the, in that, in their vision, I think it's a beautiful thing when they can figure out a way that both their visions work. Mm. And then, you know, sometimes, you know, an actor will push his vision forward. Cause I mean, it's, it's a, it's a funny thing. We completely kind of 
when it comes to performance, we control it. If you, if you direct it a certain way and we just don't do it, I mean, that's, yeah. you don't want to do that. You never right, want to do that. You don't want to piss off the director. Never try and do that. But, um, but that's a, that's a power that an actor wields and a director has the power to cut anything he wants out. So True. when you get, I mean, it always ends up, you know, luckily it's, it's, it's worked and I haven't had to deal with, with that many directors that were like that, mm-hmm. that, that were, uh, were sort of, um, controlling and didn't want any, not input because I'm not the director who's like, I, th- I think the camera should like, you, know, right, it's, you right. never want to be that, you know, but I think, uh, it's, it's always good to be able to have a conversation with, with someone as a leader. I think that's an important trait. Is, Absolutely. I know. agree. So yeah, I and mean, it's, it's a creative environment. You want to collaborate. You want to feel like yeah, a team and not that so. like one has a higher power than another. Right. And that's, that's what, uh, what's been fantastic on set with my dad is is he's very much like that. He comes from a theater background, so everything was mm. like, you know, it's we're a team. Yeah. And I think that's how it should be. And I think that's that's the kind of set that I would like to run. That's the kind of world that I'd like to be in, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it makes everyone, even the crew, it makes everyone more comfortable when yeah. you're all kind of making something together. It also makes them want to... Work harder. Work harder. Totally. Makes them want to fulfill your, your dream. And, and if everyone's positive towards something, um, you're going to get a good product. I totally agree with that. I think if there's one person in the cast who's like, mm, man, I'm like, I'm not sure it how this is going. It drags the team down. Yeah, the, yeah. You, get, you can sense it. As a, as a viewer, you can sense that something's off. And even mm-hmm. if you can't put your nose on it. Or you, you don't know, get the good stuff in the, in the cutting room. Right. You know, then you don't have the good takes and then it's harder on, on everyone's right. end. Absolutely. But anyways, so I want to talk about you and where you got started. Did I read correctly? You were born in Hawaii? I wasn't born in Hawaii. I, uh, I'm sorry. No. You were born in California and then you moved to Hawaii. Right. right? Yes. Okay. I was uh, born in California um, in Burbank. And then around when I was five years old, uh, it was me and my sister who's uh, uh, two and a half years younger than me. And uh, and I was five years old and my parents were like, we're working constantly and we're doing it. We're, we have, we're spending no time with our kids, mm. you know? Um, cause are they both in the business? Well, uh, yeah, my dad is, um, they met in acting class, ironically, <laughs> um, when they were, were acting and then they got together. My dad started to move on to doing, uh, directing, um, producing and editing, uh, reality, like not reality television, but like documentary, uh, television. Okay. So he did all the, the exports, the UFC, um, NASCAR, like all that kind of stuff where he was directing, producing and editing, uh, all of that. Cool. And, um, so that's what he was doing at the time. And my mom, uh, was a hairstylist. So they were constantly working and we had had, we, we'd had, you know, a beautiful house. Everything was great. And they're like, we're not spending any time with our kids. Yeah. You know, we're giving them all this stuff, but we don't see them. You know, mm-hmm. I, I hope they're, you know, enjoying it. So, but Well, and it says, you said you were five. You were really young at the time, right. too, which is an important time to bond with your, with right. your parents. So they said, um, we had gone on this little family trip to Hawaii. And they're like, why don't we live here? And no one had a you good had answer. You had just traveled there, and they're like, let's move here. Yeah. They're like, why don't we live here? No one had a good answer. So <laughs> so we all, we, we sold the house, sold everything, wow. went back to, like, tore it all down from the ground from, and built it back from the ground up and moved to, to Hawaii with uh, pretty much, you know, nothing but the, the little sacks did that you, we had on our back, you know? Did your parents have a job there? Or um, what did they do? My dad went and he, he, he they traveled back to LA for, you know, the stuff that they needed to do. Um, and then my dad started to get work in Hawaii Mm -hmm. and, you know, for the, the travel bureau and doing commercials and stuff and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot to shoot in Hawaii. (laughs) It's a lot of pretty scenics. Yeah, Um, right. So he started doing that and, uh, we lived there for five years and then with the, uh, the crash, uh, that hit 2009 in Hawaii, it hit in 2008. Um, cause it was, I don't know how any of that stuff works, but, <laughs> but it all kind of, uh, everything, it, it became way too expensive to live there. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the time I was doing some plays and how old were you then? I, I was 10, nine or 10. 
So you started acting when you were that young? Yeah, I started doing... I mean, I did the, the school plays, and then I moved up and did, started doing some community theater. Um, and I just... They were like, oh, shit. Oh, he loves it. Dang it. <laughs> you know? They were like, oh, he got bit. They we they moved uh, to Hawaii to get away from the industry, and I'm like, huh, you guys thought, no, no, that's not happening. What made you want to be an actor? Was, was there a movie you saw that made you be like, I want to be that guy? I mean, it was always Star Wars. From really? The it was always Star Wars. Um, I mean, Who did you want to be? Luke? I w- when I was younger, I wanted to be Luke, and then when, when I got older, it was Han. <laughs> and then, you know, when you start to get a little jaded, and you're like, you know... But, um, I can play him. Yeah, no, but I, I always, I always was in a different world. I was always performing. Um, I was never on the wavelength of anyone in any class that I was in. You know, I had one really good, really good friend out there who was the same way I was, and we would draw and and you know come up with characters and stuff. But other than that, it's out there. It's all sports and surfing. Mm. You know, um, and then I started to do some plays, and I was like, oh, this makes sense. So you met other people in Hawaii that were also into theater? Uh, not really uh, theater, but just sort of that same creative, you know, mindset. Okay. And that sort of showed that it wasn't a weird thing that was just me. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I'm not just incorrect. Like, so I started to realize that there was this, this whole other world of people who thought the same way as I did. And that, that, Did that, that make was- you feel supported? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, my parents have always been super supportive, and my dad has the same mindset that I do, and same with my mom. They're, my mom, you know, was an artist before she was a, a hairstylist, and she, you know, would paint, and, and my dad, you know, paints with, with, with pictures and with, with films. So it was always in the house. It was very much a, a normal thing of, all right, very Saturday, get family. the paints out, you know. Let's, oh, how cool. Yeah, so. And is your sister an artist as well? Uh, she no, she's not. She's the athlete, which really? is really funny. They got okay. they got the perfect. She's the athlete, scholar, good in school, good with <laughs> friends, and I'm the socially introverted artist who sits and <laughs> obsesses <laughs> over worlds that don't exist. Um, <laughs> you paint pictures in your mind. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, but when when we came out to L.A. I, I remember I was 10 years old. I'm like, we're getting me an agent. I'm going to be an actor. My dad's like, okay. When you were 10? Yeah. I was a decisive little, little dude. So how did you know how it worked at that age? Just from your parents well, telling from, stories? Yeah. I or? mean, my dad was, even when we were in Hawaii, he was still working in that world. In the industry. So you kind of understood the entertainment industry yeah. to some capacity. Which was like. incredible when it came to me starting up as an actor, you know, at... 10, 11, 12, learning the ropes wasn't, you know, I watch actors that I'm seeing now coming in at, at the age that I was and their parents are like drowning and they don't know what, what's happening. And you can't blame them because who on earth knows this other than the people who are in it. So I was very fortunate to have, you know, the right people to connect you with. It sounds like, yeah, no, I mean, it, it was, we started off with, you know, um, a friend that we had and we, we, you know, sort of moved around and did that that sort of way. I mean, it, it was mostly the fact that he understood what it was like to, they were, they were actors when mm-hmm. they were younger. Um, yeah, so you said they met in acting school. So yeah. then they, they never pursued it. They kind of went to different. Yeah. I mean, my dad, avenues. my dad was doing theater and then he fell in love with directing theater and then he f- figured out how to make money off of doing, you know, what he loved and what he really loved was narrative, which is why it's so incredible that he gets to start doing, you know, films and people are, uh, grasping, you know, his view on that. But, but the closest thing to that, that he was able, that was available to him was directing, you know, documentary television and Mm -hmm. doing theater. Well, yeah, theater first. And then he transitioned into that and found a way to make a living. Wasn't like entirely what he loved to do, Mm -hmm. you know, was, it wasn't, it was telling stories, but in a different way. So he was, he was happy with that. So we were we were good there, and and when I started coming up in acting, he was he was so helpful because he laid out a giant list of every film any actor anyone who wants to pursue movie making uh, should watch. Tell me what's on that list. Give me a few. It started off with uh, films like Citizen Kane, and we had already watched all the you know the Indiana Jones and and Star Wars and E. T. and stuff because mm-hmm. that was sort of my world. Uh, but it started going into more technical 
you know, going into the, the Humphrey Bogarts and, the, and that kind of stuff, which was, uh, I'm pretty sure I was the only 10 year old in school who understood what any of that stuff was. Um, but I mean, the, for the most part, it was a lot of, at that point, it was a lot of coming of age stories. It was a lot of mm-hmm. the outsiders and, yes. and stand by me and, and, you know, those films that were characters that I could be, mm-hmm. you know, the, Oh, I totally see that. Right. Yeah. So when I was around that age, those, that, that was what I started watching. And then as it went on, I started getting deeper in, into the, you know, the darker cinema, the foreign cinema, silent films, that kind of stuff yeah. going into that. Um, but it was helpful because I started, he calls it the filmology <laughs> and that's sort of, so we sit down we watch a, an important film, you know, or something. Would you watch like a film a night or how did you go through it? That was, I mean, we, I'd watch a film anytime I could. Yeah. That was sort of the way it was. We never You'd come really, home from school, watch a movie. Yeah, yeah. I booked a pilot with Larry Charles. And uh, it was with Ana Ortiz and Cheech Marin, and uh, we were pretty convinced it was getting picked up because it had that, you know, all-star cast. Yeah. Um, we ended up uh, homeschooling me. We started homeschooling me because of that. It was going to get – it was going to majorly get in the way with shooting schedule if, if I was going to school and yeah. that there's that whole complication. But uh, for me, I also never – I never did well in school. I, I, I think I'm a smart guy. I get, I get most things, but it, I wasn't learning through there. I was learning through other things. I was learning through film. I was learning through documentaries and stuff. Mm-hmm. I wasn't I wasn't grasping what they were trying to teach me in school and and I think my parents saw that and I mean I I can't stress enough how fortunate I I was to have them be as supportive as they were. Any other parents would have their kid come up to them and say, you know, I don't think I want to go to school anymore and, and you can imagine the response to that. You have school on set though. Right, you have yeah, to you have, have school on you set. You have school on set. So how does that work? I've always been curious about that because yeah, being yeah, a me, child actor, you have me to too. go. Through, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, come on, you did it. No, no, no. It's uh, it's basically you have to work for I believe it's three hours a day on school, on your set. Uh, you can only work when you're a minor. I think around, I want to say nine hours. Okay. You only work nine hours. Three of those have to be doing school. So would you? Do a scene, take a break, go to school, and mm-hmm. then come back and shoot another scene? Yeah. Yeah. And then do you go to school with your other cast members? How does that work? Well, I mean, it, it depends. It, yes, you would go to – there's one – there's usually one, maybe two set teachers. And they basically – if you go to regular school, you bring in your homework or mm. the stuff that you're missing while you're shooting. Got it. Um, if you're homeschool, you just do what you would regularly do, but with this uh, set teacher. And usually it's in a room where whoever is going to school at that time uh, goes. Like for Lab Rats, it was um, – most of the cast was – it was a kid's show. Underage, so most right. of the cast was going – taking breaks and going to school. Then when it was hostages, I was the only one. Mm. Um, and that was a that was an interesting – So you were homeschooled at the time of hostages. I was homeschooled at the time of So hostages, were your yeah. parents your teachers or how does that work? Well, we had a – uh, a tutor. I don't think. I don't think we would survive if if my parents were trying. To, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that would work out pretty well. But um, we had a tutor. Got it. That that came um, a few times a week to go over everything, and then and then you had an onset teacher. Yeah. So would you bring that homework from from yes. your yeah. tutor to onset? Okay. Right. Um, and yeah. So luckily we were able to do that, and then uh, I was starting to realize that that the the school thing was such an uh an issue on set when you when i started moving to hostages how so you start to realize there's so much time they lose because you have to do three hours of school every day three hours of of a nine hour day right takes up everything you know so they have to plan the production schedule around what scenes you're yeah. in it also they have to pay for the set teacher they totally to, which oh, they yeah. usually wouldn't have to have that's another person um but yeah, I started to realize, you know, I was around, this was around 14, 15, mm-hmm. that I started to notice, uh, I mean, I was 14 when I did Hostages. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was 14 when I did Hostages, playing so, 15. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pretty much the same age. Yeah. But it's, it makes it a lot harder. On yeah. Them. You know, it's, it's. All right, you know we got to, they have to speed everything up. You have to break so Mateus can go to so school. So Mateus can go to school. There goes, uh, you know. An hour. But that's common. I mean, every set knows that. That's Absolutely. the rule when you have a minor. Absolutely. But how is it for you? I guess I've never asked 
someone who's been in that position, how is it for you as an actor having to do that? Did you feel like a responsibility, like you were letting the production down? Like oh, yeah. how how did it feel to you? Oh yeah, I mean, I think I put so much. I would I would always put so much blame on myself for that kind of stuff. I guess I felt like um, I guess there's no reason to, but you know, you a 14 year old mind sees, all right, get him, we got to get him to school. There goes an hour. And you're like, no, but I can, I can stay. I can, but it's it's, not your fault. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, but there's a, there's a sort of, it, it makes you feel like you're on a different level, a different level as the rest of the cast. It's, you know, it's, it, it's the, the cast and then the kid, Mm -hmm. you know, that's sort of at at that time I was, after I finished hostages, I started to see a lack of me getting roles because of this. You think? Because I looked a lot older. I looked 16 at the time I was, you know, 14, 15. They don't want, they want 20 year olds to play 16, you know, Mm. because 20 year olds can, can don't need to break, don't need to break. They can work 12 hour days, whereas you can only work six when you bring it down. So I started to see a loss of, of roles going, yeah, he looked the age of the part, but we can't Mm. afford that. Interesting. So at this time I had heard about this thing called the chess bee. And that was, you know, the California high school proficiency exam. And it's a sort of an exit exam for school. And my parents knew that they were going to keep me educated. Uh, and I knew that I wasn't going to be keep, kept educated in a, in a regular school kind of manner. That's mm-hmm. just not how my mind works. Creatively, I need to be doing whatever it is or figuring out my own way. Mm-hmm. I think it's different for everyone. I mean, you know... Ev- my sister, I, I don't, I don't think she would do well in homeschool, but she kills it in, in, you know, a regular school situation. Yeah. So I'd taken the chess bee, um, at fifteen, and and you passed. Yeah, I passed. I don't understand how. Um, fifteen? Does that mean you graduate school? Yes. Yeah. For all intents and purposes. Wow. So that means you don't need to have onset nope. schooling. Nope. Yes. I did not know that was a thing. Well, yeah. It's a. Uh, it's. It's kind of a loophole. I mean, some... <laughs> it sounds like it. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like no, but that was the best decision for you to make. Of course. I mean, I stayed, you know, my dad is loves education with all of his heart, mm-hmm. <laughs> as he should, as a dad. Um, so he continued to teach me, and and we would find things that I needed to do, and it brought up more time for me to learn through films. Um, and that was one of the best decisions that I ever made because it put me on a different level. Um, when I went to murder in the first, I was, I was 17 mm-hmm. or, yeah, 17, but I was considered an adult with the rest of the cast. So do you have to show your certificate to the production to yeah. show that you don't need Yeah, there's all schooling. paperwork, all kinds of stuff. But, um, but yeah, so there was, I, I was brought back up to the rest of the level with the rest of the cast. Mm-hmm. You know, I started off with the rest of the kids in Lab Rats, and that was like, oh, this is normal. This is yeah, what we do. Right. And then we move up to Hostages with all adult. I mean, even Quinn was an adult at the time. Mm. Uh, she was well, she was 18 or 19. And um, so the rest of the cast was, you know, the rest of the cast and then the kid, you know? That's so interesting because I never thought of that because you, like you said, we're on Lab Rats, which is a Disney show, yeah. so primarily kids. And you think that this is just the norm, but then you're brought into your first "Quote unquote adult show." Yes, you know that sounds bad. Not yeah, an adult no. show. Adult not, programming, yeah, not that, but a show with adult actors, and yeah. you're like, oh crap! Like I'm the odd man out. Right, play like, younger. Has to be so challenging in your position where you're like, I just want to work. Like no, you just want to work, and it's nothing you're your doing. Age, it's nothing you're, you're doing. You're yeah. super talented, and you you go out for so many auditions, and you you have such a, a long resume already as a young kid, and it's like. You're deserving of this role, but it's unfortunate that you feel like a hindrance. It sounds like that you're you're disrupting yeah. the production because of your age. Right. You can't freaking control yeah, that, man. Like, no, I mean, I, I, it's so easy to to be angry about that stuff. It's so easy, but yeah. you start to realize, and I've realized a lot more since I've been on the other side of production. I mean, right now I'm I co-produced the last film Relish, and I'm producing uh, this film that me and my dad are working on right now, uh, which is super top secret, but um, but. But I'm producing that one like, you know, actually doing the job. Um, so I'm starting to realize like, oh, yeah, why would you ever cast a kid? Why would you mm-hmm. ever do that? Um, so that was something we that, that I learned 
as time went on to go, it's not against me. The The world isn't against me. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's just the way it is. And every actor... I think has to pay their due in some way. Absolutely. And I think that was that was that was mine. And but you still got so many roles. I mean, you're 18 now, right? Yes. Uh, 19. Or you're 19 now. You're over 18. So, but you had so many roles when you were under 18 though. I so, was so fortunate. Yeah. I was so fortunate. So it didn't seem um, like it really interfered with your career at all. No, not at all. I mean, it it's 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 different cuz you know, when you're auditioning, you know, 3 or 4 times a week, it starts to feel like there's a lot of time where you're not booking things it starts to feel like, oh, what am I doing wrong? And it's like, no, most of the time, no one ever, it's one person gets an audition. Yeah. There's only one person that can get that audition. And there's a lot of people. And there's a lot of reasons why, you know, there's a lot of reasons that I started to realize, you know, too good looking, not good looking enough, too tall, too short, too mm-hmm. too young looking, too old looking. You know, it's so you start to realize um, all you can do in an audition is you can go in and you can do your best with the character. Bring something different. Mm-hmm. Uh, breathe life into someone for, you know, uh, a few minutes. And I think that's when I started to get into that mentality, that really changed how I worked as an actor. Um, so do you not yeah. get discouraged if, if there's a role you don't get? Do you beat yourself up over it or are you pretty positive? Like, oh, it has nothing to do with me. They just went with someone else because of X, Y, and Z. I've learned. I've learned to do You've that. You've got to learn. Because I've interviewed other actors who just say, I mean, it's tough. Like, yeah, no, it's like, tough. They're it's like, tough. the audition process is so tough, and it's so hard not to take that personally. And me, I can say that I'm a really sensitive person, and I <laughs> take little things personally. I'm not an actor, because I also don't think I could handle the rejection. No, I think you have to be completely um, insane to be able to handle that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can say I don't think I would handle it well. And so I'm always impressed when I interview actors who say, who, like you said, three or four auditions a week. And then let's say you don't get any of them that week or the next week. How do you keep your motivation and stay positive yeah. through all that um i think that's that's what i had to learn and i have the the greatest acting coach uh his name is dennis laval and i've worked for him for like eight years now wow um and he teaches a lot of a lot of that sort of mentality where it's if you go in and you give a hell of a performance there's that is a win mm-hmm. if they don't there's a there could be a casting director that doesn't like you because you look like their ex, you know, and that's why you don't get the part. So you know? true. That's just there could be like psychological reasoning that yeah, you have no yeah, control I mean, over. You could have a, a weird mole in a place that makes them uncomfortable, and you know, there's <laughs> you, you never know what it is. So I think that's you're, comforting. You're yeah. responsible. The one thing you're responsible for is the performance you bring, and that's that's when the love for acting happens is when you're not going in there to get a part you're not going in there to get the job you're going in there to do the job Mm. your job is to audition your job is to play this character for the certain amount of time that you have him or her you know I i interviewed another actor who said auditioning is part of the job it's not just booking a role and doing the job auditioning mm-hmm. is the job of an actor that's when it starts i mean that's uh, yeah absolutely that's that's well said. Yeah. Um, and I, I got something out of it because, again, I'm not an actor, so I never thought of it that way. I just think of actors as, of, oh, they're in that movie. Oh, they're in that show. It's like, no, no, no. Oh, actors yeah. are working constantly, auditioning yeah. all the time. My dad, uh, my dad, whenever I would get super discouraged as a kid, my dad would pull up Brad Pitt or George Clooney's IMDb mm-hmm. and go back to their early, early jobs and their one or two co-stars, then to guest stars, and then a year of nothing. And then one part that they thought would break them out that was really big and then kind of a Mm. few months of nothing, you know? So you start to realize that it's not – there's no such thing as an overnight sensation, Mm -hmm. you know? You want it to come easily and and quickly, obviously. You want to come to Hollywood and have, you know, the gates open up and go, oh, you're the next big star. But I'm glad it hasn't because Mm -hmm. I've been able to train. Mm -hmm. I've been able to hone in and learn and – get new tools and characters. And that's why I'm in acting class constantly. Um, when did you start acting class? The second I got out. The second I got out. I, so I, how old were you? 10. So 10. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, that's, you can never stop training. I don't think an actor should ever stop training. Uh, well, that and, shows and, how serious you are about the craft. You're not just coming to LA like, Oh, I want to be an actor. You study the craft. You study the films. You, are in acting school. I mean that you take it very seriously, and that's why I think you've had success and been able to book great roles. Well, I think that's. I think 
I, I I will toot my own horn a little bit because you I you know I'm proud. Hard, of, man. I I at a young age I I was able to speak professionally about the craft. I was able to speak intelligently about films that everyone else had seen. There was no communication barrier that there usually is with kids, where you, a director who is solely you know, learns everything through films, as a lot of directors do. You remember that one scene in da-da-da-da-da? Well, it's kind of like that, but mixed with a little bit of a scene from da-da-da-da-da. People are probably like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I luckily had that, um, that knowledge at a young age and a work ethic yeah. at a young age. Um, I think I, have a, I had a better work ethic when I was younger than I do now, which, you know, I'm working on. We all, <laughs> we all got to... Sometimes, though, from a production standpoint... That might be more important than the talent, too. I think it's a combination of oh, both. Yeah. I think if you are... Because nobody wants to work with an asshole, and no one no, wants to work yeah. with someone who's late all the time, talk about wasting time on set. Yeah. I think if you have a strong worth at work ethic and you're talented, I mean, both of those together definitely yeah. sells yourself. I mean, that was... I, I learned a little bit of that uh, on Relish from the casting point of view, is we had, you know, really low budget, no time. We shot that film in, in nine days. Um, and we had we had maybe one or two takes. Same with Meanest Man in Texas. So two takes. That's it. Yeah, one or two. Sometimes moving if, on. If it was if it really wasn't getting there, we'd have a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But and that would probably ruin the rest of the day, and we wouldn't get an entire scene. You know. Uh, but luckily, what what we made sure to do because uh, my mom did the casting because you know she has learned so much about the industry through you know, working with me and my dad. So yeah. she, she went out and she was finding actors and doing that. So it was a, oh, that before, before a film, this house is a, a madhouse. It's just, <laughs> you know, on the iPad, like showing tapes and stuff yeah. that people send in. And, and what it was, was it like being on the other end of that. Oh, it's, it was so strange, yeah. but also so helpful. It was oh. so helpful to realize, cause I, I am so bad at doing self tapes, self tapes. If I go in, I have a, a confidence that they can, you know, if you look me in the eye, person to person, there's a, a, a connection there that shows the way my mind works and the way that I sort of, the, it shows the work ethic. You can that present I have. yourself authentically because you're face right. to face rather than a tape and where you a tape, have to put on an right. act. Yeah. And I, I, I always built off of audience reactions. I always felt if another person's you know, feel in the scene, I can feel that from them. And that's, that's how I work. Working with a tape, you don't have that. Mm-hmm. You don't know if what you're doing is meh, you know? What's um, the ratio you audition with from in person to tape? Lately, it's been a lot of tapes. Yeah, lately, casting that. has started to move to tapes because... And it's not really tapes, we should say. Is it just like on your iPhone and you send in a video? Or is it... Well, no, not, yeah, not tapes. It's, um, it's, yeah. But it's just like a digital recording a digital, that they, yeah. yeah. It's just, you know, your slate, hi, I'm Mateus Ward. But I think the reason they're probably doing it now is because it's easier. You just record yourself, send it in. It's just with technology. It's so much easier. That's that's entirely how we cast Relish Mm. on tapes. Meanest Man, we did did, uh, sessions, but most of the people we booked were off of tapes because uh, tapes are more challenging in my my opinion. Um, As an actor? As an actor, yeah. I, I think... You, I mean, you, you, there's a lot of great things about him. You control. If I go into an audition and I bomb, mm-hmm. I can't go, can't all right, take two. And let's see. Yeah, right, let's, right. Um, there's something about that that I do like a lot is, is it is an audition. You know, I should be striving not to mess up the first time, you know. Um, but tapes, while there is that, there's also not that feel of an audience, that feel of, of, of someone there getting to meet you personally, you know. Yeah. There's conversations that happen. It's, you know, I never try. I go in there and I do my job. I'm not there to get invited to their, you know, pool party. I'm there to get it. I'm but also the they job. like you personally and you're going to spend that many hours. I just right. think that that plays a part as That's well. That's important. You know, it's the it's the work. It's the it's the feeling that you get when you're there and auditioning. Nothing makes sense until you're on a stage or in front of a camera. Mm. And I think that's sort of that's how, you know, um, a real actor I think because there's, it's not instant gratification. It's not, it's not, Oh, you moved to Hollywood. Now you're in a big rich house with all the money in the world and everyone Mm -hmm. loves you. There's most of the time. It's not most of the time for most of the people. It's not most of the people don't make it. That's just the way it works. It's cutthroat. 
But um, as an actor, there's nothing else. There's nothing else that, that makes sense or you can do. It's when you're in front of that camera or you're on a stage or, you know, you're in a voiceover booth or you're, you know, wherever you are on a TV set, anything, that's when life comes together and makes sense. And when that's what it is, that gives you the ability to push through all the bull of the audition process and push through that for that for what it is. You have to remember what it's like. I mean, I had... I've, for those high moments. Yeah. I mean, there's... I auditioned for um, something recently that was terrifying for me. Um, it was a character who had um, nonverbal autism and couldn't speak and his body was contorted and, you know, it was it was an endeavor of a part to audition for. Yeah. Um, and I was really scared. And I, at the point that I was, you get, you start to get not confident when auditions come in and come in and you don't get anything and, and you're not, you're not getting bad feedback, but you're not necessarily getting incredible feedback that you do for other parts. You start to get into a lull and you start to doubt yourself. Yeah. That's the one part is you really start to doubt yourself. You know, I don't blame any of the casting directors for not picking me. You start to blame yourself. Yeah. Um, so at that, it, I was at a really sort of low point in that, and I was like, "Yeah, there's no way I can do this." So I tried to find every reason I could to to pass on this. Really? Because you were too scared. Because it was a it was a terrifying endeavor, and I was like, "Oh well, if I'm I'm I think I'm a little too old for this part." You know, I think you know I'm too trying big. To this guy would be a smaller a guy. And 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 then um, I looked at it, and I was like, "No, you don't you don't turn down work." When you're in the point that I am, you don't turn down an opportunity for this. This is a casting director that you have the ability to make a, an impression Absolutely. on. Absolutely. And more importantly, uh, you don't learn by doing what's comfortable. You don't grow as a person by doing what, what is easy and what – and I think that was a lot of the other stuff is I was just going out for, you know, you know – cute guy at the locker and, you know, yeah, it, yeah. it started to get like – where I was just getting comfortable with that. You want to challenge yourself as an actor. I was getting, yeah, I, I wanted, and I needed that challenge, and that pushed me back into, back into the love of it a lot. That so was did a, you audition for this role? I did, I did, and I, I got really good feedback. Awesome. I went in completely transformed, did not recognize me, <laughs> you know. I, I, and that was something that reinstated what it meant, and that's what I think is hard because there's a lot of roles where you go and you start going in for stuff that you don't really love. And that's what the that's the job because it's offered to you and you need it's a job offered, and so you, you need a job audition, you know yeah. pe- people don't think about you know it's a creative thing and when I was young it was always don't worry about the money it's about the it's about the craft but right. when you're you're 19 and and you're like oh this is a living now this isn't the fun thing that I used to do when I was younger this is now how I have to make a living you start to you start to have to go out for stuff that you know, when I was on, when I was doing hostages, oh, I was such a greedy, selfish actor after that because I was like, oh, I'm on top of the world, you know? You're on a CBS show. Thinking, show, it, thinking yeah. it was going to go on forever. At the time that it did, I was turning down auditions. I was really? on no more this, no more that because, you know, you start to think you have this image. You don't want to go down mm. below that. And then, you know, you get invited to all these parties and see so you are big people. You know, you search up your name and all the good pictures come up from all the red carpet <laughs> stuff. Now you go online and, and there's You said like, you're also 14 at the time. So that's, yeah, that makes I was sense 14, for a 14 and it year was old. 15, even though the show had ended and it was canceled, it was still like people knew about it. People recognized yeah. it. So it was a, it was a, it was at that point where I started to get a little bit of, I don't know, an ego, yeah. not entirely an ego. I don't think I've ever been, I'm better than this or, or that, but I, I deep down you were like, oh, let's let's see let's see if this is you know worthy of my time, and yeah. that was a bad place to be because when you're on top of the world like that, I wasn't on top of the world. You, you felt know, like I, it though. You felt like it. Yeah. You know, there was it was a it was a show that had you know a season, and I was that kid on it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You were Tony um, Collette's son. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean they were all on top of the world for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I had the I had the illusion that I was afterwards. Um, and I sort of had that and that was great for when I go into auditions and I felt like I was, you know, a little badass going in and, and you've killing established it. credits. Right. I, and I, I felt like that, but I started to think, you know, too big. And mm-hmm. when it comes down to it, the random indie roles are, are the ones that are incredible. 
the parts that from films that probably don't even have funding are the ones that are incredible. Um, yeah, yeah. And then I got into a point where I was like, oh, I don't care if it's a big budget thing. I just want, I want, oh, I want those serious dramatic roles. And that's where I got for a while. Mm. Where it was like, if it was, you know, random guy on, you know, a TV show, I was like, oh, no, no, no. I, I'm, I have to I'm play, I have to play, yeah. you know, torture victim, you know, like that's, that was where my <laughs> mind was. And it wasn't until recently that I, that I realized I was being an idiot. I was mm. being an idiot because, because work is work. Work is, um, any opportunity is a good opportunity. Um, work, every experience matters. Every audition matters. Good experience matters. You should go in. Uh, I don't think you could be a good actor if you, if you don't have at least a few times where you've gone in and bombed an audition and mm. felt the room drop and, and, and everyone was like, Oh, that wasn't okay. Thank you. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. So you've had that. Oh yeah. I've had that. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've had so many situations like that. That's how it is. You, I mean, actors, they, there's a lot of pressure on actors to be consistently on point. You know, when you see, you go to, you know, the, you go to a screening or you meet someone on the street. They're supposed to be happy all the time. Mm-hmm. They're supposed to be happy and professional. They can't be tired. Yeah. If they had a bad day. Their dog died earlier this morning and they don't exasperated, like excitedly say hi to someone on the street. Yeah. Rumor gets around that person's a, that person's a yeah. asshole. Like, yeah. You know, so that, that's something that I, that I realize is like, it's crazy. It's a weird thought. And you realize, like, if, you, if you're on the street and you meet someone, you're like, hi, I'm a big fan of it. And they're like, yeah, 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 thank, yeah thanks. Yeah, and you think they're an asshole. You think they're an asshole. Totally. Yeah. I've, I've, I've experienced that. Yeah, and you, <laughs> you start to realize, you know. You're like, they're a human being, though. Which, yeah. But, but, but you, the, if you, you know, admire someone and you're so excited to meet them, like, and then they let you down, of course you're going to be of like, course. oh, Of course. No, there's no, there's no, there's no <laughs> blame for that. But it's just an right. interesting, yeah. interesting juxtaposition uh, to, to see that. Mm. Um, have you had fans come up to you like on a bad day? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Have and you had what's like your your funniest fan inter- interaction? I actually um I do this thing called uh the Young Storytellers uh big show, okay. which is basically this um they do it all around or at least I don't know all around the world, but um I did it in New York and I did it here. Uh-huh. And schools have this program where writers from shows and stuff come and they mentor little kids. And they write their own scripts. Oh, that's sweet. And then at the end of their year, or the end of their, however long it takes for them to write the scripts, and they're like little five pages, five page scripts, and the kids are little kids, mm-hmm. and it's adorable, and 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 they have real actors come on and and play the characters in the scripts. You get a cold read. You never looked at it before, but yeah. it's really fun. It's one of my favorite things to do, um, but it's really funny because. Th- the kids recognize me every time. Uh-huh. I don't know how. From I, Lab Rats? From Lab Rats, yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, they recognize me from Murder in the First. Yeah, right. I just really, you know, into that like, whole socio-political, you know. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, for Lab Rats, uh, which is weird because I don't look the same way I did. I don't know how they recognize me. They're little <laughs> detectives because I've gone through so many different hair dyes and colors and haircuts. I don't look like how I did. Um, but they always recognize me Yeah, and, um, they always flip out and they, and I'm, I'm after the show and I'm drenched cause they, you have to play a helicopter, you know, yeah. like that's, that's the, that's the stuff that you do. You, you know, you play a superhero and jump around yeah. and do crazy stuff and oh, it's adorable. So it's fantastic. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, and afterwards this last time there was a line around the entire auditorium and it was for me. And, and once you get into that mode, you're just, oh, you have your head down yeah. and then up to them to say, hi, nice to meet you, ask them their name and then sign them something or take the, take a picture with them. Right, right. I'm, I don't think half of them knew who I was, but they saw a line and they jumped <laughs> They're right like, in. all right, so who's like, something cool is happening. <laughs> right, right. Um, but yeah, that was really funny because uh, it, it's interesting because that's not their generation. It's reruns. It's, it's reruns from the show. Like they're little kids. They weren't. When that when that came Does out, Disney they, keep playing the show. I, they must. I guess, yeah, I guess, or they they you know found it. It was on Netflix for a while. Okay, uh, that I think makes it sense. It just got taken off of Netflix, but it was. That, um, that makes sense. And it's really interesting, you know, to see them like go crazy over that, and that's got to make you feel good. It feels incredible. Yeah, it feels incredible because you you remember why you're doing this, and it's the people. It's not. 
you know, you're doing it to move people. Even if you're playing a, an evil robot in a show, mm-hmm. um, it has an effect on them. It has an effect know? on them and it has an effect on you because you were explaining how much you love being an actor and how right. you wanted to do this since you were 10. Yeah. So it's no. like a mutual, Absolutely. You know. I mean, so that was not a lot of funny ones. I mean, I've had people shout across the street, you know, do the eyebrow because my character would, he would like raise his eyebrow <laughs> uh, and that was his like... Everyone, he just did that for me, I just so you know. I know eyebrow. you can't see it. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, he would raise his eyebrow and then the director loved it at the table read and we made it that character's Oh, that's thing. so cool. Okay. So you know how some people say like, say the line, say the line. Yeah, so and, yours is the eyebrow. And everyone's do the eyebrow. Um, I'm sorry, I have not seen Lab Rats. I, I apologize. I should have watched before oh, that is a I interviewed video. Uh, that's every... I know. <laughs> I gotta see watch that. it. No, that's know. on the filmology list. What are you talking? <laughs> Shit, <laughs> um, I missed that one. Um, but no, that's uh, really fun. The the most fun recently is is w- when I'm out with my friends because they <laughs> they find it so funny when people scream across the street, do the eyebrow. People scream across the street. Yeah, it's little kids. It's oh little my kids. See, oh my god, your guy from Lab Rats. Oh do my god. The eyebrow. So do um, the eyebrow. <laughs> So funny. Oh, yeah. I love it. And they'll, and I'll take a picture and they're like, no, can you can you do the eyebrow? Shut, and I was like, okay. Shut no. up. Yeah, That's it's hilarious. really, it's adorable. Uh, but my friends have, so have caught on to it and they find it hilarious. So that's that's always fun. Okay. But no, not really, not really any like super funny ones. But yeah, everyone sees actors as this perfect specimen of, you know, human compassion and physical appearance. And, you know, mm. you, you have a lot of expectations. So Do you feel the pressure? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, um, there's a lot of times when I think a lot of people have gone through this where you feel like you don't deserve it. You question why you're like, you know, you see all the people commenting and you can't respond to everyone. And and it makes you feel like you're not doing enough because you become a champion for people. You have a responsibility to to change the world with with what you do. And sometimes the things you want to say on Twitter, on social media, you can't say because you're not at the point where people want to hear your opinion, but mm. people do want to hear you talk. They want to hear you say something. So it's, it's a really weird responsibility. Mm. Um, uh, Quinn Shepard from Hostages just had an incredible post about, she posted on Instagram about it and how she was like, you know, she's frustrated with social media because you have to present a package and you can't have contradictions and you can't be weird. Yes. And that's how people are. I know. And I think people don't, people don't expect, or they expect actors not to be. Mm-hmm. They expect actors to be either the character they play or the perfect Or to not celebrity. have any flaws or to have bad days or oh, to yeah. not, I mean, it, it's like you forget that everyone yeah. is human no everyone matter what human. your job is. Mm-hmm. But I feel like as an actor, it's, it's, it's weird. It's, it's, a, it's different because people recognize you on TV so they they think that they know you so then yeah. it's like no their life is perfect because i just saw them on this mm-hmm. but it's like i mean i you think you have the, like a different persona i don't know the worst just, i think just, um is for comedians oh. because comedians are everyone's best friend uh-huh in in their mind they 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 you feel like you know someone when you watch whitney them talk cummings about their life. is my best friend yeah i don't know what you're talking fucking about fucking yeah. love whitney cummings <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you know them you feel yeah, like you totally. know the actors you know you you get to a point where you you watch someone on a tv show and you're like oh that's that's them that's yeah it's my pal you know yeah 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 so there's there is an an, an expected familiarity that you kind of play up a little bit um but yeah i think the I think we got onto this because we were talking about making mistakes in auditions mm-hmm. uh, and how it's like, you gotta, you gotta understand that you're not, you know, you are a mortal with, you know, on, you can do only what you can do and you can only do your best, you know? So do you feel more confident when you leave auditions? You don't, you don't get down on yourself if you don't get it? No, no, not anymore. I mean, there's, there's ones that you want really bad. Yeah. You know, there is, there is, you know. There's auditions that are just for really big things that would change your career instantly, and there's one little flaw, not in what you did, but you know you're too tall for the part or something that oh, just strips that away from you, and it sucks, and it sucks, and then you go and see the movie with you know everyone you know going to see this movie, and you're oh, like, and yeah. you know you auditioned for it. Oh, yeah. oh man, I never thought of that. Yeah, I mean one of the hardest ones was was Spider Man, and that was yeah. Which one? Uh, the recent one. The, you auditioned for it. Yeah, I auditioned for it, and um, and it got leaked, which did not help at all. Someone was waiting outside the audition place, and 
uh, figured out who I was and leaked that I was uh, auditioning or that I was. Did you audition for Spider-Man? Spider-Man? Yeah, yeah. Holy shit! Um, and I had gotten gotten fairly. You never know, like what's the next step and what's what's yeah. bigger. But I had gotten. I went back in and and they'd give me direction and I brought it back in and and that sort of stuff. But it was the one thing of I'm taller than Robert Downey Jr. and and they want Spider-Man to be you know a a nerdy kind of you know relatable teen and they're like you at that time I was you know working out a lot and they're like you look like the kid who would make fun of Peter Parker um and luckily um, so you were too strong yeah I, I, <laughs> I went in for a superhero role and they were like no you're too superhero looking um <laughs> Uh, luckily they made, uh, and it's hard because you, I watched the film back. I'm like, nope, that was the right decision. They cast the perfect guy and he was incredible. Um, but can't you give yourself credit that you actually had multiple auditions for that oh, role? Oh yeah. No, I mean, I, that's, that's incredible. No, that's one of the best, the best feelings ever is that they were like, you're one of our favorites, but you just looks wise. You're not, you know, the role. And you're too built, Matthias. You're too, you're too, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hate, I hate. When people, because it, it got leaked and it was public for a while, and really? oh, people had opinions. <laughs> oh, they were they hated it because. Were you upset it got leaked? Oh, very. You because are. they they immediately thought it was me. Are you serious? Why would you leak that? Oh, to like brag? Oh, I I auditioned for Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. It 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 leaked, and and the person who released it made some off comment about you know how you know sixteen year old kids can be can't keep their mouth shut and then everyone assumed that it was oh my god me. yeah um so that was sort of a, a hard thing and i went back to them i'm like look i didn't leak this i'm yeah. so sorry that it happened i know you were keeping it secret that you were going for someone younger um i took all the heat for the new casting choices you know for the for the new idea that they're casting a younger uh a younger look uh-huh. um so that was that was a weird thing is is seeing the internet hate you for like a solid week yeah, that was. Oh my That was gosh. really funny. That was. Um, yeah, your self esteem's got to be really high. I, again, don't know how you do the job, man. That's. Um, that's... Yeah, me neither. Um, <laughs> yeah, why am I here? I w- <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think I think it comes down to it comes back to the acting and the love for it and the 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 craft. Um, because that'll get you through anything, you know. All the actors who are you know waiting tables and you know struggling. There's a lot better places to live, a lot easier places to work, um, but you're there because you love it. You're there because there's nothing on the world that you would rather do, you know. So that's 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 why I think it's 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 kept me this long is because there's no other world that I that I fit into. You I know? love that mentality. I really do. Um, I want to talk about your role as older Stevie in Weeds. Yeah, yes. Dude, that is an amazing role to play. I'm a huge Weeds fan. Um, That's one of my, to this day, that's up up there with one with my favorite performances of of mine. That was. Tell me about how you got that part. Well, I I went to audition in the same way everyone everyone does. I had a bunch of friends who were auditioning for it. You know, it was the it's just a it was an audition, Um, and. And I, I went in and I bombed. I, I bombed. There was two scenes. There was a scene that was from um, other, another character, uh, the, the middle son, uh, from another episode, because they're kind of the same uh, personality a little bit. Uh-huh. T- enough to use those sides for an audition. And then the second scene was the big speech at the bar mitzvah. Mm-hmm. The, like page and a half long <laughs> speech that I gave. Um, and I flubbed every line in the first scene. I watched, I went back and I watched the show because I'm a good actor. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good auditioner. And I went back and I watched the show uh-huh. to understand the tone and to understand the characters and to be well versed on the topic. Uh, and so that I could say the names right as uh-huh. well. <laughs> right. Cause they you're saying names and I, oh, I mispronounced the names even though I knew them and it made me look like I never watched the show. I was terrified. Um, and the casting director looked at me and felt that there was more. Mm. And he was like, let's do the second scene. And, um, I did the second scene, which is just a big monologue. Yeah. And not one flub. I got through it. My best performance to this date, um, (laughs) was that in that audition, uh, because I had destroyed any chance I had. I don't know. I was so lucky to get 
usually if you mess up that bad on the first scene, they're like, all right, yeah, we don't have, we're, but he, we're not doing the second scene. But he felt like there was something else you could give. But there was, it felt like there was something else and I got that opportunity and I did it and, um, and I went back and did the callback. I, I did good in that one. And then, and then I got the part. Wow. Um, so you hadn't seen the show. I imagine you're probably too young to watch it. Yeah. What was I like? 13? Yeah. 12 or 13. So yeah. did you know who Stevie was in the show, or did they had to tell you about it? Well, I went and did. I went and watched the show and watched the episodes of the younger version of. I see. Of him, um, but when I was auditioning, I didn't understand at all. It wasn't mm-hmm. until I got the part and they're like, "You're playing this character," and then I went and figured it out because um, yeah. they did the jump, right? The in time the finale. Jump in the finale. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, after that, I went and I made sure to watch. Um, as much as I could, at least everything with my character's father and with the younger version of him mm-hmm. and to know what I needed to know. Uh, there wasn't a lot of time to watch, to binge an entire yeah, right. se- uh, seven or eight seasons. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's, that's one of my favorite because that is, that is me as an actor and it's, in it's, you know, kind of purest form. There's nothing interfering with, with who I was in an actor at that point. There was never, there was no ego. There was no mm. need to get a job. There was no need for any of that. It was acting. It was, you just loved it was, what, it the was, job you were given. Yeah, it was acting and it was, it was subtle. There was no big burst out crying scenes. It was just being mm. through that entire thing. And that was um, some of my, my, my favorite work I've done because, because of that. Because I didn't have any expectations of myself other than to, to do this part justice. And that's why I think... Um, it's, it's, you know, as good as it is. Cause I wasn't, I didn't have, I wasn't jaded yet, you know? Yeah. And now I've gotten past that. There was a lull where I think, I think I had some, some issues with confidence and issues with, with that kind of stuff is everyone should, no one's perfect. Um, uh, you have doubts, you have resentment, um, but like right now, I've moved past all that, and I feel like I'm a better person, a better actor for it. And before then, I didn't have that. So, yeah. so those that's that's one of my favorite. Well, you can see how much you've grown. You said you've been in the industry what for nine years now. You started at ten. You're nineteen. Yeah, yeah. So with all the things you've learned, and you're still so young, what other goals do you have as a actor, as a performer? I mean, I think uh, for goals, I. I I mean, there's obviously like the dreams and the Oscars and and all that stuff. That's what you want. But my goal is from now on to 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 move people and to do projects that, or to to create projects that matter to me. Um, I wanna I I wanna I wanna start directing. That's a big big dream of mine, and I'm I'm looking at ways to start that now um, and do that. But I think for acting. I want to continue getting better. I never want to stop learning. Uh, I want to get to a point where, you know, I can use what I do to help people. I want to get better as an actor. I want to move past some of my, I want to move past my comfort zone. I want to do some characters that don't make sense for me to be and play that. I want to play characters that don't look like me or, or, or talk like me. And that's, I mean, as an actor, that's sort of, the way I approach things with, with every character, um, it's subtle, but if you go and look at, at, you know, the characters that I've played at, what I try and do is cast a different silhouette or emit a different sound, uh, as every character, the way they hold themselves, um, the way they speak, the, the, if it's a subtle accent or, a, a you know, kind of speech thing to find mm-hmm. something different, uh, so that every character sort of looks and feels a little different and that's sort of something that I that I focus on um I find as much as I can of me in there and then create something else and that's why I was lucky to have my weird psycho imagination for this for this industry because I get to sort of put myself in a different person's shoes yeah. and and get into that mentality and make it real for the moments that it is real on screen well, it sounds like you're doing exactly what you're meant to be doing. <laughs> thank clearly. you. Clearly. Yeah, and you're I, I well so. beyond your years, I have to say. Well beyond oh, your thank years. You. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was yeah, so good thank talking you for to you. Me. Absolutely. Hey, that concludes this week's episode. I really hope you enjoyed my conversation with Mateus. 
As you can tell, he is well beyond his years, and I found he had a lot of insight to the industry, especially being a child star. So I really got a lot out of it, and I hope you did as well. If you haven't already, head on over to iTunes and hit subscribe to Inside the Artist. I would love if you would give me a rating, a review. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Rachel Corman, and stay tuned for more episodes coming soon.